Welcome back to the Course Creation Incubator. Gina Anativia here, online course coach, consultant, and coach. And as always, I am stoked to be here with you to help you get your course done and out to market. Today, I'm talking about going live with your course, which I think is one of the best ways to get your online program out to market fast, get that validation out there, versus creating every single piece before you even launch your course. By the way, I talk more about going live and the different structures that might be right for you to build your online course back in episode 13, so check that out. Now, going live has been top of mind for me. The last few weeks, I've been supporting Tracy Tudor, who, if you know Tracy, is an absolute badass from Million Dollar Listing LA, as she delivers her course for entrepreneurs and real estate agents. Every Wednesday, Tracy's been going live, building the course week by week, something she's never done before. And I've got to give her a ton of credit for going for it each and every week. The payoff has been amazing. Every week, I feel like the content just got better and better, and the students really responded to it and just became more and more engaged. And I think when you go live, everyone feels a little bit of that trepidation at first. Like, how the heck is this all going to work out? But then you get into the flow and week by week, the content gets better, just like with Tracy's course, right? It was already great week one, and now it's just been A++ in this fourth and final week. And also what happens is this group of strangers or your students turns into a family of sorts and something powerful happens. That's part of the magic of going live because you can respond in the moment. You can build on those emotions. So today, since the experience is so fresh for me, I'm going to run through some pointers to help you nail your own live experience. And by the way, if you're listening to me right now thinking, Gina, I'm just stuck. I'm frustrated with my course creation. Take my quiz, coursecreationboutique.com slash quiz to help you get unstuck, to figure out what's been holding you back as part of your course creation process. Let's start with the do's and don'ts of delivering a live course that's great, that really serves your student, that supports you in the process. First and foremost, I want you to survey your group before going live. I do that with my own accelerators every single class, and we did it with Tracy's Entrepreneurs. So important to survey your folks so you get a sense of who you're serving and what they're really looking for. Because you may think you're attracting a certain student And you may be surprised or you may need to go deeper into something because that's what this specific group needs. In my last class of accelerators, for example, I leaned more into validating their course ideas because they asked for it. They needed it more than other accelerator cohorts. With Tracy, we surveyed her audience of mainly women about their expectations and what questions they had for Tracy. And this helped shape our planning meetings and helped us come up with multiple ideas for over the four weeks that we had planned. That's the next do, plan your outlines. Now, it'll mean different things for each of you. You may do bullet points. You may have slides. You may do full-blown scripts. This will be unique to you based on your presentation style and what you're comfortable with. Here's a few steps of how you can do your pre-planning. One, you will have your core outline for the four or six or eight weeks of your live course. This is your master flow for the entire journey. Then you will have a set of your weekly documents with your weekly outlines. These can be slides, bullets, or scripts like I mentioned before. And then third, you'll have your handouts or worksheets for each week. For Tracy, we did these after the fact because Tracy was creating some fun content on the fly that we didn't want to miss with each of the cheat sheets. But I also love having them ready to go. Like for my accelerator, I have a lot of times I have templates, swipe and different worksheets ready to go in advance. And then the fourth component, you'll have your updates for each week. What comments and questions came up? What additional content pieces might you need to add for the following week or for a future week in terms of your live course? Overall, you want to keep your content fluid. That's part of the fun of going live. You can change it up on a moment's notice, add stories of what just happened or how a student was impacted the week before. Someone in Tracy's course had given a cancer update because she had positive news and we all shared in that. We all got excited for her. That's the kind of magic that happens during a live course. 
Now, going back to that first piece of pre-planning, you want to make sure you're following your core outline so you stay on track to deliver that course promise and, of course, the transformation. It's easy to maybe go on tangents based on what your students ask or what they need more of, but don't get too off track because you don't want to have two weeks left of your six week program and you can't deliver the transformation based on what you had previously planned. Questions and comments have definitely impacted how we shaped Tracy's course. For example, back in week one, we had a question about Tracy's beauty routine and we were able to incorporate it into her week four content like really nicely. And also in week four, some really vulnerable and personal details came up and Tracy got vulnerable and it was just amazing. The students loved it and appreciated it. And I just think because we went with the flow, because we were flexible and kept it open, we had moments like that. Okay, so now that we've talked about content, let's chat about something that is so important, equally important when you're going live, constant communication. Do over communicate. Over communication is so key. Nail down your details as specifically as possible and be consistent. For example, we were going live every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific on Zoom. You will get access to your member area later that night. You have a separate community like I do with the Accelerator. Then give them details about how to sign up for that. Put those details in the emails, post in your Facebook group, and inside of your member site. Put it multiple places inside of your member site because you don't know where they might look, where your student might check it out. Post those details in the emails, in your Facebook group, inside your member site, multiple areas inside of your member site, right? So for us, it's Kajabi. And there's no such thing as too much communication. I think sometimes we get this wrong, like, well, I've already communicated this once or twice. Let me tell you, especially when you're starting out, people get bombarded with emails, right? And posts and social media. You have to rise above the noise, even though they've invested in you and they've put down their money. You've got to rise above the noise so they know what to expect from you. There's no such thing as too much communication. If I leave you with nothing else, remember that. You will be surprised by how many questions I get about details. Your students may have missed an email, but seen your communication inside of your site. Quick sidebar here about software. I mentioned Kajabi a minute ago. I use Kajabi for my clients and students because it's so easy to update and maintain. We use Kajabi for Tracy's course and it's been totally seamless. It's easy to communicate updates with your students on an ongoing basis. And I've mentioned this before and I'll do it again, but the templates are just gorgeous. If you're interested in Kajabi, check out the info in the show notes. I have a special package with a training and onboarding call with my tech manager, Ivy. Okay, back to those do's. I've got another one for you. Do respond to every comment and question, either live or inside of your site or community. Let your students know you're there and you're listening. One way this could show up is you answer the questions you don't get to during your live session. Now, Tracy is so in demand and we had so many questions that we would end with a slew of unanswered questions after the calls. So Tracy would graciously record answers to those. We'd get them transcribed and then post them inside of the site. I mean, talk about incredible value, right? For those students and those questions, those answers were a surprise. We didn't tell students, hey, Tracy's going to record these afterward for you, so stand by. It wasn't an expectation. It was a really nice surprise. All right, let's switch gears to our don'ts, or really areas not to sweat as much when you're going live. First, don't sweat the delivery too much. Now, I want you to practice and prepare. I talk about Bo Eason all the time. If you want to really deliver for your students in terms of your videos and going live, check out Bo Eason. The beauty of going live though is not sweating the small stuff as much. Now I say this and the last time I delivered a live course, I did have a bit of a hiccup. The night before I was starting with my fall accelerator, I got food poisoning, like violently ill food poisoning. I felt awful. I reach out to Megan O'Leary, who you all know from last episode, where she walked through how to boost our nurture email rates. And Megan said it won't be perfect, but you can muscle through for an hour and still deliver tremendous value. And that's exactly what I did. I muscled through because that's what we do as course creators, right? Especially when we're going live, because I knew I had that commitment. 
And as miserable as I was to deliver that live, I was grateful that I had that commitment, that I had that date on the calendar. And I didn't want to move it. My students were ready to go and I was ready to deliver for them. And again, it was important to be consistent with what time we were meeting. Now, changing that first call would have thrown my accelerators off, I feel like, for the rest of the course. So don't worry too much about the delivery if you are delivering amazing value. Your students will forgive a lot if that content is truly valuable for them. Here's another don't to think about. Don't worry about flashy slides. Tracy delivers without slides. So does Bo Eason, who I mentioned a few minutes ago. I have several accelerators from the School of Bo, and they don't deliver using slides either. Instead, they focus on their delivery and really connecting with their audience with the content that they have. If the thought of creating slides gives you hives, then you deliver and connect with them straight direct to camera. And then you can create comprehensive PDFs to go along with the information you share live. Or if it really is just about the creation, you can hire someone or pay for a simple software like Canva, which makes creating slides so much easier. But again, don't sweat it. You can go live without slides. Here's another don't when it comes to delivering live. Don't stop marketing. You can continue to enroll students even after your first or second class. They can catch up, trust me. With Tracy, we continue to market the course. We've had students sign up throughout the course going live. They jump into the site, watch what they missed, and they're ready to go. This especially works when you have a course with topics that don't build on each other week to week. But even if you do build week to week, don't worry about it. They'll catch up. Go ahead and keep marketing. One final don't, don't stop here. Your live course is just the beginning. You can make it evergreen. You can re-record. You could spin it off into a group coaching program or a mastermind or some kind of advanced offer. The sky is the limit. Here's why I want you to do another survey, this time for your graduates. There's another do. Do survey again. What did they love? What can you improve upon? What are they looking for as the next step from you? Then you could take that feedback and create the next step that really serves your students and you. Okay, hopefully I got you excited about going live and you see some of the magic that happens when you go live with your students. And if you have any questions about anything I mentioned in this episode or how to put your quiz results and those tips into practice, send me a DM on Instagram at Course Creation Boutique and we can chat. Next week, you and I are talking money and specifically how to treat your course creation like a real business. I'm going to bring on Tina Tower out of Sydney, Australia. And let me tell you something, this lady knows her course creation. She's going to give us all the details about how you should be breaking down your budgeting and expenses when it comes to your course creation and marketing. And she is straight to the point and right on target. You are going to love her and this episode. Make sure you like, rate, and review Course Creation Incubator wherever you listen. And please subscribe so you don't miss my interview next week with Tina. Until then, go live and go create. Be you and be brilliant and get it done.